You're watching UK Gold and it's time to check into the Crossroads Motel now. Beverly went ages ago. What are you doing with those? Can't just starve. If we get up in time for breakfast, you wouldn't have to starve. Is it open though? Yeah, just about. Dad never stops eating pot noodles. Doesn't he? Every time he goes past that pot noodle show. Jason, off to school. My husband won't touch pot noodles. He just keeps going on and on about the good old days of proper wholesome food. And why don't I get him them TV dinners anymore? You know, the ones with mashed potatoes and peas and chicken and a little ball of savoury stuffing. Science marches on, I suppose. Mm. Do you know why people's corpses take so long to rot nowadays? No, love. Because of all the preservatives. The last a thousand years, my body will. Jason, may the Lord preserve and keep you, as they used to say to us in Sunday school. See you. Bye-bye, love. We had a foreign gentleman came to preach to us once. Oh, may the Lord pickle and keep you. <laughs> Glad we could have died. He's a nice lad, is he? It's a difficult age. Yeah. At least he's got a nice, sensible air cut. You want to see me sister's lad? You could sweep your chimneys with him. Have you got a Valentine card? Oh, sorry, we don't sell cards. Anyway, it was on Saturday, wasn't it? Yeah, but I wasn't working on Saturday. I'll have to try oh. off the post office. There's ever such a nice young man up at the motel where I work. Well, we've still got a few flowers left. Oh, yes, very nice, but I wanted a card. A funny one, you know, with something rude on, so that I could put the wind up at that girlfriend of his. Ooh, she's a proper little hussy. Mm, is she? I can't get in that shelly for days on end to vacuum, you know. She's a temptress. Well, is there anything else I can get you? Well, I'll have a tin of rice pudding. Us old married women, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we know all about that sort of thing, don't we? Uh, Debbie said you'd have your eagle eye on the books before you were back on your feet, and she was right. Who's this trainee manager on 9,000 a year living in? Ah, oh, yes, well... 9,000 pounds living in for a trainee manager. He's a bit older than most and more experienced. He should be on 6,000, top whack. I've got great plans for Charles Mycroft, don't you worry. Charles Mycroft? Mm. <laughs> the one that Debbie told me about. That's right. She said that if he ran a sweet shop, the jelly babies would run a mile. <laughs> He's all right. Frankly, <coughs> it's that other Mr. Oity Toity that's going to be the headache. Who's that? Mrs. Friedman's stepson, Master Daniel. Debbie says that he's a bit different, that's all. I don't pay him to be different, I pay him to work. Anyway, she only says that because he checks at a fish restaurant. He's nice looking, I'll say that. He's for intelligent. Him. But he's a lazy so-and-so, and I can't abide laziness. And, uh, what about the rest of them? Are you still bullying that poor Mr. Darby? Well, I don't know what the fella did with himself till I come along. I and Mrs. Freeman's times every morning, I dare say. <laughs> and, uh, the gardener. Oh, uh, Mr. Chance. Mm. Uh, I think I'll set him to digging over and planting out when the springtime comes. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> he's competent, mind you. Which is more than I can say for a lot of people who work at Crossroads. Oh, dear. Trouble ahead. Yes, love. Hello, oh. Doc. Fancy feed you that boarding house of yours. You shouldn't be hungry if you've had a proper breakfast. Oh, I had a proper breakfast, but I've got a big appetite. You certainly have. Well, I suppose it's carting all them cases around. Look what you've been buying. Well, it's a special card for a very special person. It's a Valentine. Well, I got one of them. Do you want to see it? Oh, aren't you lucky? Yeah. I just live in hopes when it comes to my Ron. Roses are red, violets aren't blue, 
they're purple and green, and so are you. From a secret admirer. That's nice, isn't it? Do you know who it's from? Oh, oh no, you're not supposed to know. No, but you can guess. It's not Miss Dan's writing. Oh, well, you just have to wait and see what happens, eh? Who do it for? Well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? Well, I can keep secrets. Is it for Mr. Darby? Him? He'd be looking to get on my Christmas card list. Oh. Well, I'll give you a clue, so long as you promise not to breathe a word. Oh, I promise. Well, he's tall and dark and handsome, and he works at the leisure centre. Mr. France. Mrs. Freeman. No, sir. Mr. Lancaster's in her office. He's going through some papers with his wife. Then where is she? Well, she's still away. What? She hasn't been heard of since Tuesday. Well, she said she was going to be away for a couple of days. If you want my opinion, sir, it's going to take her more than a couple of days to resolve her problem. She's had some nasty shocks lately. Yes, I know. Where did she go? To be honest, sir, I don't think she wanted anybody to know that. She certainly didn't say a word to me. Well, she must have left a contact number. What happens if anything went wrong here? We're in the capable hands of Mr. Lancaster. Don't help us. Don't you worry, Darby. Take it from me. Lancaster will look after you. Are you prepared to do me a little favor? Just say the word, sir. Get me the number of the Royal Albert and lend me an A to Z of London. <laughs> hey, what's this? Hands off. It's probably just another late Valentine. I thought I was running a bit short. Good Lord. Nasty letter from the bank manager. No, no, it is a Valentine, but it can't be for me. I don't know anybody with that bad taste. Must be for Mycroft. It can't be. He's not tall, dark and handsome. Is this your idea of a joke? Certainly not. You've had all you're getting from me. <laughs> really? Idiot. Hmm. I wonder who it's from. Well, it's probably from some lovesick little chambermaid. There's one who blushes every time she comes in to do my thing. Well, just you keep your hands off. I'm not there to keep you amused, you know. No, but you are. Hmm! I know who it was. Who? It was that cow, Debbie Lancaster. <sighs> Don't be ridiculous. Of course it was. She looks at you like a man-eating tiger. Tigress, surely. Girl tigers are tigresses. She's not a girl. She's practically middle-aged. She's all of 26. 26? She's 30 if she's a day. And she looks like the back end of a bus. I think she's quite attractive. You fancy her? I didn't say that. I just said I think she's you quite attractive. You rotten pig. You <laughs> knew it was from her all along. I'm quite sure that Debbie Lancaster is above sending tacky little Valentine cards. I suppose you think she'll be able to pull a few strings now that you haven't got Nicola looking after you. Oh, come off it, Fee. I can't help it if somebody sticks a Valentine under the door. Could be from anybody. Lorraine or Mandy, Anne-Marie, Michelle, the girl from the lounge bar at the running stag. Well, if Debbie Lancaster thinks she's going to get a clause into you, she can think again. 475, 80, 90, 5 pounds, thanks. Look, I'll try and get it in for you by next week. Bye-bye. We'll go and have a cup of tea as soon as Bev gets back. Look, why don't you go upstairs and wait? Well, not Margaret, I know when I'm in the way. Not in the not way. Not as if I'm not used to being on my own. What with Mrs. Aldwinkle laid up and me stuck in the house all day long. I don't suppose I'd recognise a blessed soul of the bingo anymore. Not recognise? Never away from that place. No, you be forgiven. And you're always winning. A bottle of wine here, a Sunday joint there. Sunday joint? What good's a five pound leg of lamb to a lonely widow? Well, we'd have shared it with you. <laughs> Cupboard love. Love me, love my joint. Oh, you're too busy to visit me anymore. And I can't very well carry a joint across a, a continent to King's Oak, can I? A phone for me. No. Language? I don't suppose you recognise your grandmother anymore. He said he'd be here yesterday and he wasn't. Why isn't he found? He's working. Don't you chase the boys. You let the boys chase after you. He won't phone. I know he won't. I'll never see him again. In fact, I'll never see anyone in this dump. Do you know, I might as well be stuck in Toy Town with Noddy and Big Ears for all I'll ever see of real life. Beverly! 
She wants her mouth washing out with soap. Yeah, yeah. Speaking all right, to a well. mother like that. Look, could you hold the fort just for a moment? I'll go and speak to her. Wait a minute. If you think I can work this till you're wrong, you have to be Einstein to understand one of those tills. If you need any help, just shout me. I'm going to sort that girl out once and for all. better while I'm at school. I'm still miserable. Rubbish. I hate all my new friends. Now look, Beverly, you've just so got to... Keep... Whoever even speaks to me. Beverly, you've got to keep on trying. Give it three months. Three months? Mum, I could be dead in three months. Yeah, well, that's true enough if you go on playing up like this. It won't ever be different. Everyone hates me. There's kids telephoning for you all the time. Your dad's sick of people asking for Chloe. Teachers hate me. Did something happen to upset you at school today? And Dad hates me. Mind you, he hates Ranjit as well. Oh, Beverly. It's true, though. I bet he only made you move over here to get me away from Ranjit, didn't he? <sighs> you stupid. Your dad grumbles about being here almost as much as you do. Yeah, well, he's always telling his stupid, boring jokes about packing. Look, it's just his way. It's hard for fathers when the little girls grow up. You're growing up too fast by half. Yeah, well, I could murder him. He's jealous, that's all. Just because me and Ranjit are going to make something of ourselves. Are you? I was going to before I was dragged out to this place. Beverly, the move was all my doing. You know it was. Look, I meant it for the best. I, I did it for you and Jason so you could make something of your lives. Yeah, well, it's just making me unhappy. That's all it's making me. Oh, look, Mum, can't we go back to Wheelie Castle? It's not right for us here, honest it isn't. Hello, Doug. Guess who's in the top mass set, then? I wonder. Well, it's not Dad. It's not our Bev. I never thought I'd have a grandson who was brain of Britain. <laughs> not when my Margaret ran off and married your father. It... It's a bit of chocolates. Oh. When you're in top mass set, you get to do your exams early. And you get to do statistics. You'll be able to help your mum with all the shop business. Yeah, if she asks me what's 300 weight in kilograms, I'll tell her the sign over the angle of X is the opposite over the hypotenuse. <laughs> yeah, don't you go upstairs. Your sister's having one of her tantrums. So? Stupid Burke's just dumped these boxes here and driven off. Some people don't like hard work. I bet you those you never see, Well, not like I say, Benny. Come on, let's get these inside and then uh, we'll unpack them later. Was it a surprise? So, well, no, not really. There's nothing very exciting about a few boxes of dried prunes. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I meant the card. What card? Oh, I can't tell you, but it was nice, wasn't it? How do you know about the card? I mean, do you know who sent it? Yeah. Well, who was it? Oh, you're not supposed to know. Oh, Lord, look, it's very important that I find out. Yeah, but I said I wouldn't say nothing because you'd spoil it. All right, look. But if I guess who it was, you will tell me, won't you? Now, was it Lorraine? No. Anne-Marie? No. Oh, I can see we're going to be here all day. Yeah. Uh, the king peaches are on that shelf over there, just near the baking kettle for all. OK, thank you. Is it just these that you want? Yes, thank you. I'll go and get changed. You know, I was tugged up to the kill yesterday. He never turned up, and now look at me. You look fine. Liar, I look like something out of the Titanic. Just don't go away. Hold it there, OK? Sorry about that, madam. Can I help you? Yes, please. I'd like to be served. Jace? 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 What? You've been at your like a flipping zombie with them things on. I said, go and mind the shop. Why? Because I'm going out, that's why. Sorry about yesterday. I think you know what these family occasions are like. Oh, yeah, well, I don't, actually. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. I went out with Sarah, so you wouldn't have got me after seven anyway. Mum and Dad was out as well. In fact, there was only Judge Dredd in the flat. I mean, he just plugged himself into his Walkman and ignores the phone. Basically, he's not even a human. Oh, terrible. My father wouldn't let me out. He said it would be disrespect to the family. I had to understand. Blimey! 
You should have been there. Every cousin twice removed was there. Oh, yeah. My mum and my aunties were in the kitchen making food all day, forming the perfect chapati <laughs> hour by hour. <laughs> we want to come over to our house for a change. I haven't done any decent cooking for ages. Your mother works really hard, you know. You should learn how to cook. I know. I will one day. My mum was right. She said you'd come. Well, it took me about half an hour to worm it out of him, but he succumbed to the Freeman Inquisition in the end. Poor old Mrs. Tardy Big. I don't think I've got much to worry about there. Oh, I don't know. I've got a pretty soft spot for redhead. You needn't think it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I was determined mm. never to speak to you ever again. Well, that would have been your lookout. Now, can we please go in for some coffee? In a sec. First, make me a promise. What? Promise me that you'll never ask that Debbie Lancaster out. Not even if she's the last woman on earth. All right. I promise. Nope. You've got to say it. All right, I will not ask that Debbie Lancaster out, even if she's the last girl on Earth. Woman! Woman on Earth! All right, even if she's the last woman on Earth. Happy now? You can get me that coffee now. Hello, Margaret Bright here. Oh, hello, Mrs. Leacher. No, I'd only ordered flowers for the one day. Well, perhaps um, Sid could pick some up at the florist uh, if he's going into town. Yes, I should think red roses will be a little cheap an hour past the 14. Uh, okay. Yeah, fine. Bye bye. Jason, couldn't you have picked up the phone? Oh, it's for Chloe these days. Well, it wasn't as it happens. It was my best customer. Right, I'll see you again soon. When will that be, do you think? Oh, I don't know. My dad's starting to put his foot down over the van. He says me and my brother use it too much for our social life. Honestly. He's right, though. He does need it more now the orders are coming in. I just suppose I'll have to check out the bus time table for King's Oak. <laughs> a bus to Sleepy Hollow? You must be joking. You might as well come on a milk float. It's really nice here. Why can't you see it from your mother's point of view? Look, I will come. Yeah, well, that's another thing. My dad started to put his foot down over the phone as well. He says we're always on the phone to each other, and the orders don't get through. Just perhaps you better not phone me at all. What are we supposed to do? Write letters to each other for the rest of our lives? Perhaps you could come over for a party. You must be joking. After what happened at Kate's last year? I mean, whose mum's going to let us have another party after that? I suppose so. All I remember was when Kate's dad came in and Rick poured all his spoons into the coke. If my dad hears about that party, probably chain you to your second cousin once removed for the rest of your life, eh? And we'd both be like prisoners, wouldn't we? Comedy awaits us at 25 past five in Only When I Laugh. Now on UK Gold, the omnibus edition of The Bill.